Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to make this wire macrame bracelet with beads running along the edges of it. So this is what mine looks like here. So this is the effect that you can achieve. Obviously depending what materials that you want to use, you can achieve different effects as well and different looks. So you have your macrame mainly down the center and then we have our beads, whatever combination of beads that you want to use as well, running along the edges and it goes all the way around. And it's nice and comfortable to wear because it's nice and flat as well. And it's also a bit on the more flexible side, but it's still nice and strong because it is wire that we're using. And I've just used a lot of claw clasp here with extender chain. You can of course use whatever clasp you want to. So if you want to learn how to make this, then stay tuned. So then these are the materials that we'll need. Now first of all here, we'll need whatever wire we want to use. This is a regular round copper wire and it's a 0.6mm. We're going to use it throughout the whole piece. And then we'll need our beads as well. These are just the beads that I've chosen to work with. You can really use whatever beads and whatever combination of beads that you want to. The first ones here, the larger ones, these are 6mm rounds. And I'm just using this kind of green-blue coated hematite gemstone bead. And then I have 3mm metal spacer beads and silver. So like I said, you don't have to use this combination of beads. You pretty much just have to fill in the space. So you can use one bead, multiple beads, whatever combination, that's completely up to you. And then we have our findings here. So I need my ribbon ends to be able to finish off the bracelet with. These are 13mm ones, they're going to fit just perfectly on the ends. And then I've got my clasp, so loft of claw clasp, extender chain, and then my jump rings there as well. So let's get it all together and let's get started. So then the wires that we're going to need are six lengths of our 0.6mm wire here of about one meter each and these are going to be all the wires that we'll need to use. So what I've then done here is taken all my wires and attached them onto my macrame board. I'm just working on this mini macrame board, it's going to make it much easier because we have these notches along all the sides here. So you can see I then have three wires in one notch and then three in the other notch right next to that. This is how I'm going to start out. So what I'm going to start doing first of all is I want to make one square knot with each group of wire here. So I'm just going to start with one of them, separate them out, then I'm going to have one in the middle and I'm going to just run that down, fasten it in the other end of the board just so it's a bit easier. Then I'm going to take my left wire out the working wires now over the holding wire in the middle there. Then I'm going to take the right one. So we're just making a basic square knot here, if you're familiar with that. I'm going to take the right one over that and then underneath everything in the middle, so underneath the holding wire. Then make sure to bring it up through the loop here on the other side. And then bring it all the way through. Now obviously, it's the same technique as say if you're using cord, but because we're using wire, it's a bit different to work with, so you just want to be a bit more mindful, because wire here, if you just kind of pull it and it's not sitting quite right, it can make a kink or bend in the wire that we don't want. So just work with it gently, and kind of maneuver it as you go how you want it to be. I'm going to push and pull the square knot, half of the square knot, the first half here, just pretty much up towards the start. Then I want to make the other half of this square knot. So I'm going to take the left, sorry, the right one over the holding wire like this. And then I'm going to take the left one now and bring it over that and then underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop. As you can see, it's just a regular square knot. And then pull this all the way through again gently. So we don't get our kinks here and then tighten this all the way up below the first half and then there you have your first full square knot. So that's the beginning part, kind of starting off these groups. So what you want to do now is just do the exact same thing with the wires and the group of wire here, three, on the other side as well. So we have one square knot right next to each other. But the difference with this side is because it's on the other side, what I want to personally do, you don't have to do that. But what I personally want to do is, again, just separate out your wires. I want to start with the other side first. So I'm just going to separate them out. So this is the holding wire. Bring it all the way down and tighten it into the board. Just like that. 
And then like I said, I want to make the exact same thing, so a square knot, I'm just going to gently push this a little bit out of the way. Don't push it too far, because obviously we don't want to make a kink up here. But then, instead of taking the left one first, like I did on the other side, I'm going to start with the right one and bring that over first. And the only thing is just more aesthetically how the knot ends up looking, because you'll see on your knot here, you have one side where you kind of have a little loop going over, but on the other side it goes below. So that's the only reason really. So we kind of get that loop thing on the outside on both sides. So I'm just going to start with the other side and make my square knot here. So now that I have both my square knots there, one on each side, now I need to reposition our wires a little bit. So what I'm going to do first of all is release the two that are just the holding wires from the slots below because they're not going to be the holding wires now. And I'm going to just take them out to each their own side, so just the side that they're naturally on already like that. Then now what we need to do is then these two wires that are kind of coming in towards the middle and wanting to cross over, these were two working wires, one from each side. These are going to be the next holding wires. So this is where, especially beginning, you can just maneuver your knots and wires into position. I need to bring these more straight down. So just pull them downwards here from the knot like that. And then I want to bring them all the way down and then I'm just going to place them in the same slot on the bottom here. You can see right there, just in the same one. And you can also just reposition your wires at the top if you need to, because I just want to make sure to try and get these wires to sit as close to each other as possible. So it's all going to sit nicely when we make our next knots here. So just like this, so I've just put them at the top in the same slot as well. And you can see now I've got the actual square knots sitting tighter together. And we have these two that are now going to be the holding wires sitting right next to each other in the same slots. Because now what we need to do is make some knots around these two. So we're now going to have two holding wires. So what I'm going to do is make square knots again. But I'm now going to use the two wires that are separated out. Just need to get my wires untangled here. They are a bit long to work with, but obviously as you make more of your piece, they're going to get gradually shorter and shorter and become easier to work with. So these two wires that were before, that were the holding wires that I released now, these are going to be the working wires now. So what I'm going to do is just make square knots with these. So I just take my left one, doesn't really matter what side you start with, as long as you stay consistent. Bring that over the two holding wires. Then I'm going to take the right one over that and then underneath everything in the middle. And that means both the holding wires there. Make sure you catch both of them. And then up through the loop on the other side. And then pull it all the way through. And then tighten this nice and gently all the way up. Especially the first one here, just do it a bit gently so you don't have any wires that pull through from above that's attached to the board. Then once you start, you've made a few knots here, you start making them, you don't have to worry about that anymore. That's the first half. Now make the other half by starting with the opposite side, so that's the right one in my case. Bring that over the holding wires, like that. Then take the left one over that and underneath everything in the middle, catching both of the holding wires. And tighten this and what I just want to do before I tighten it fully is I'm just gonna pull the first half tight again and then I like to kind of put my finger on it and then pull the second half tight and then you there have a full square knot again so this is the first one what I want to do now is make three square knots here in total after each other so make another two around these two holding wires I now made all my three square knots here in this middle section around both holding wires. Then we need to reposition our wires again because we now need to make the square knots that we did on each side again. So to do that we need to reposition them back to how they were, more like. So the two holding wires that I was just using here, I'm going to release them and they're not going to be the holding wires now. These two that we just used as the working wires, the one from each side here that's coming out towards each side. 
these are now going to be the holding wires and again we just do one side at a time so first of all I'm going to take this holding wire or this working wire that was a working wire but now it's the holding wire bring it down just like that and just put it into one of the slots and these two holding wires that were the holding wires before I'm going to just separate them out from each other you kind of find after the last square knot you'll find that they kind of naturally want to go to each their own side for lying flat next to each other so just take the one to the right out so we have these three are going to be the group of wires there on the right again so I'm going to start with the left ones so we're now basically in position and ready so that means the other one of the holding wires is going to be with this group of three so that's the one we're going to make first so we have the holding wire in the middle and then what we need to do before we make any knots is we need to add our beads up here to kind of bridge that little gap so what I'm going to do is then take the beads that I want to use and what you want to do with this is really completely up to you I'm going to have them sitting like this so I'm going to start with one of my 3mm round metal spacer beads and then I'm going to take my larger bead here that's going to then be in the middle and then on the other side of that I'm going to take one of my 3mm rounds again and that is just the pattern that I'm doing here to give this kind of nice effect but like I said you can really do whatever you want you can also just have one larger bead that fills out the whole gap or just a row of smaller beads as long as whatever you're putting in there comes down to the point where this knot in the middle, these knots in the middle kind of end because that's where we're going to make the next knot. So because we're on the left side that means I'm going to then start with the left wire, bring that over, that holding wire in the middle now, then I'm going to take the wire from the right which is one of those two previous holding wires in the middle but it's now a working wire so it's only ever all the wires kind of keep swapping jobs as well so holding wires and working wires bring that over that and then underneath everything in the middle and up through here on the other side this opening so it's just kind of getting used to the working wires and holding wires the holding wires are literally just the wires that you're either making knots around or usually that holding beads and working wires are obviously the ones that are making the knots at this at that moment in time and then tighten that all the way up and you can see it's going to fit perfectly with the beads there and that's going to fill in that little gap nicely so you just want to tighten it until you can't have it go any further because you have the actual knot from the middle row there stopping it as well then we need to make the other half of this knot so I'm going to take over the right one over the holding wire and then I'm going to take the left one over that and underneath everything in the middle up through the loop and then bring it all the way out and then gradually tighten it here and just tighten the first half again and then tighten the second half so we there now have a square knot and again like the beginning I'm only going to make one on each side because it's just these kind of in-between steps between adding the beads so release the holding wire take these three wires that we just used put them back out to the side to kind of get them out of the way and then we can move over to the other side so remember this is then the three we need to use now the middle one which was the working wire from this row of knots in the middle that's the one that we need to bring down place in the slot on the bottom there of the disc and that's now going to be the current holding wire so just like this and then we also need to add our beads here so I grab my wire here and then again just add my beads onto that I'm just going to use the same pattern that I used on the other side so one of my 3mm rounds first then the larger one and then one of the small ones again just kind of aesthetically pleasing so you have that larger one in the middle but like I said completely up to you what you want to do with yours let them fall all the way down so they're going to sit on this side exactly the same as the other side now to make the square knot here 
Remember, because now we're on the right side, we now need to start with the right car, right wire, sorry. Obviously, if you choose to, that's just what I'm going to do. So bring that over the holding wire. Then take the other working wire, the one from the left side, are these the group of three? Bring it over that, and underneath everything in the middle. And it's just try and like ignore the other group there when you're using the groups on the sides to make your knots. Kind of gently push them out of the way, but obviously you can't push them too much because then you might make too much of a kink or bend in some of the wires. And we want to avoid that. And then tighten this. Make sure the beads are pushed up, all the way up, like that. So there we go. And then we need to make the other half to lock it completely in place. So now take the right one over the holding wire. And then grab the left one over that and underneath the holding wire in the middle and up through the loop just like this and then tighten this as well and there we go so that now sits like this and then you can see you have this little kind of macrame section where we've also now added in some beads so now again because we made one knot then each side we basically need to reposition all, all our wires again to do the next step which is then again this row of knots in the very middle so that means the two working wires, that one from each side that are coming naturally towards the middle that are wanting to cross over, they become the new holding wires. So I need to bring these down together and I'm placing them both in the same slot on my macrame board here. So they sit right next to each other. And then the two holding wires, the one from each side, they will now be the new working wires. So I'm just going to take my left one here over the holding wires and then I take my right one over that and underneath everything in the middle and up through the loop so again just the exact same square knot and then what I also just want to mention is when you're tightening your knots here because it's wire that we're working with just tighten it nicely all the way up I like to kind of when I'm tightening or when I've just done tightening I like to then run the wire that I'm working with currently through my hands and my fingers to smooth out as I go so I don't kind of just leave kinks and bends in it along the way I always make sure to smooth it out as I go because then it's ready for next time that you need to use it and you're less likely to get a kink where eventually if your wire has a kink or too many kinks it weakens it and it might eventually snap if you're not careful so I like to make sure that I smooth out my wire as I go to help to try and avoid that basically so just finish off this square knot I then bring my right one over my left one over that underneath everything in the middle up through the loop and then tighten this again just like that and then it's now one full square knot so as you can see this is the beginning of the row in the middle that we did up here so what you want to do is make another three in total so that means another two from now but three in total here just like up there and then we'll get to the point where we need to make one on each side but remember then to add in the beads on that little gap as well and this is all there is to it really you want to keep repeating this over and over and over until you reach almost the length that you want it to be and then obviously mine is whatever clasp or however you want to finish it off because that adds a bit of length as well so now that I then kept going here until I almost reach the length that I want the full bracelet to be obviously minus the clasp keep that in mind then what I'm going to do is I want to finish off both ends here and get them ready to be able to use my ribbon ends to finish them off. So what I want to do, I've ended here on the two square knots that I have, one on each side. Like I've done throughout, I've just ended on those ones. So what I want to do is stick with them and just do a couple more square knots on each side. So I'm just going to stick with the one that I've got available already. Just continue making a square knot. Careful to only go around that one holding cord. So this is basically just like I said to prepare to be able to then finish it off because as you can see here if we just have the one square knot, knot on each side we have the beads very close to the end and I want to just have a little bit more spacing 
with my knot work here until from the end to the very first beads so when I add these they're not going to conflict with the beads there as well so I just want to make an extra couple of square knots on both sides so I now made the extra square knots here on each end and I just ended up with three knots on each side there of each end of the whole piece so we have this so what I'm going to do now is finish off the ends here so then of course we're going to do the same on both ends here to finish it off so I'm just going to show you on this now what we have is obviously these lengths are why I left we want to get rid of all of them we want to just still make sure that the last knot isn't going to kind of come undone a little bit it's not too important because this very end is going to go inside the ribbon end as well so that's going to hold it nice and securely but what I want to do is the very last square knot on both sides, just do one at a time you can find you have this little well and then I'm going to take one wire here that's coming out towards this side and then bring it across to the other side and basically have the wire line into that well so it's basically looping around that holding wire so just like that and then the other one from the other side here that's naturally coming towards the other side do the same thing and just kind of push it into that well coming towards the opposite direction then I'm going to get my flush cutters here and I'm going to go in and cut these off because it's just a little bend it's enough to hold it in place for now and just enough so I'll cut it off right before where the knot ends just like that on the other side as well here and then what I like to do is just get some flat nose, a chain nose and go onto the very last knot here, flat, and then just squeeze it a bit because that really nestles those two ends into the knot and then it's nice and secure as well and again like I said don't worry too much about what it's like because this is going to be inside the ribbon end do the same on the other side with the two working wires on that very last knot and then cut off the excess lengths so all we're doing here is getting rid of our wires so we can then nicely finish it off because we don't want to end up with something too long that's why I'm cutting them off just within the last knot here so they're not sticking out beyond it because then they might end up sticking out of the actual ribbon end itself and I want to avoid that and then squeeze this as well so there we go and then as for the two holding wires here all I'm going to do is just cut off the excess all the way down to the last knot now because this is why you don't have to worry about this just coming undone and unraveling straight away because it holds itself in place just nicely so these ends are now ready then I'm going to get my ribbon end here and you can see here it fits just perfectly and then also what I like to do is add some glue to this just for the extra security so I'm going to be using some E6000 it dries nice and clear so in case anything spills out a bit you can't really see it but also it's really strong and it works perfectly for using on wire so get a bit just on my toothpick here that I'm using to apply it with and then I want to get a bit inside of the ribbon end and get it up and down both sides here don't need to use too much it's just a bit because if you have too much when you then clamp it down it's just going to come spilling out anyway so there's no need to use too much like that and then the excess I have left I like to just go over the very end of my piece because then you get a nice and strong bond between the two pieces when we connect them like that I'm going to take the ribbon end place it on top of here again get some flat nose pliers and then just hold the ribbon end in place as you're flattening this down and I like to just start from kind of one side and do gentle squeezes so I don't go in one place and do a big squeeze all the way down I do a little bit at a time to make sure the ribbon end isn't moving while I'm clamping it down because if it moves and then you clamp it tight then you're kind of stuck you probably have to see about taking it off completely and then use another one so then just when you're almost there check it's still in the middle it hasn't moved and then I go in and do a nice tight squeeze here and I always like to come in from the sides just so they're not too open and there we go so that's now finished off nicely and of course you want to do that with both ends and then once you've done that you can use these loops 
in the ribbon ends to then attach your findings. And then all that's left to do is just shape it in place. So here I then added my ribbon ends on both ends here. And obviously my clasp, you can use whatever clasp you want to. I just got my Lost or Claw clasp and extended chain. And all that's left to do, like I said, is shape this into place. What you can do, if you have something that's the size and shape that you want it to be, you can just fold it around that. Otherwise, you can just use your hands and fingers, especially for this, it's quite easy to do because it's a bit of a thinner gauge wire. So it's pretty easy to shape around like this. So I just kind of like to start in one place and then gradually go from side to side, getting more and more of a curve in there until I then reached the shape and the size that I want. So keep going here and you can see gradually getting more of a curve and then when you're about there we can then use the clasp and then it's ready to wear as a bracelet and if you need to do any final adjustments so there we go it's nice and comfortable to wear as well because it's nice and flat but also it's still nice and flexible so it's not too rigid but at the same time it's obviously strong and sturdy because it is wire so this is what it looks like so a pretty nice look there with all your macrame kind of running in the middle and then your beads along the side so that's what it looks like I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial then and you found it useful as well and thank you very much for watching hello everyone today I'm going to show you how to make this multi knot double row wire work macrame bracelet and this is what it looks like so this is what mine looks like with the materials that I've used so you have two rows here going down with beads and then multiple knots in between to give a quite a nice separated effect there so if you want to learn how to make this then keep watching so these are the materials that we're going to be using now first off here the wire that I've got is a 